Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. I'm the Crypto Game Snob, and I bought myself a couple of Demogorgons. I have been eyeing these up basically for the entire year that I've been playing Gods Unchained, maybe even a little bit longer, actually, and uh, deciding whether or not I should bite the bullet or not. Now, this is not a video that is based on card price speculation, uh, because for that, I've made some other videos. I think this price is uh, going to continue to go up. This is a powerful card, and uh, there's not all that many of them out there. And uh, yeah, who knows? This card can be played by any god. It's a neutral card, so it has like mass appeal. And it is it is a powerful card. Here's the thing. Here's the point of this video. All right, so now that I've, I've bought a Demogorgon, a Demogorgon, and I've played with it for a while, was it worth it? Does it increase my gameplay power? Does it improve my win rate enough to justify the expensive cost? You could say yes and no to that. Because really, what game justifies $1,000 worth of cards or $2,000 worth of cards? Well, and then you could argue against that too. It's like, well, tons of hobbies cost many thousands of dollars and it's just fun, right? Like if you take up windsurfing or, or rock climbing, you're going to be into that for a few thousand dollars worth of equipment. If we're gamers and we're ha our hobby is playing games, then we might be into those hobbies for a few thousand dollars worth of equipment, quote unquote. But anyway, the, the point of this video is not the, the monetary value of Demogorgon, but rather, is this card all that it is stacked up to be? And I can say, uh, in a nutshell, really briefly here, in a nutshell, yes, this, ga this card does not disappoint. Uh, I have now been playing this card in some of my kind of uh, quasi board wipe death decks, uh, sort of a zombie death slash board wipe death deck. And this card is fantastic. It's extremely powerful. You drop it, of course, at mana seven. You get that leech on a sleeping creature, so you're guaranteed to heal for at least three health. Your, your opponent's entire board goes to uh, board goes to sleep, and then, of course, unless they can wake up their board you can run this creature into something else into their face into another creature you can just continue to get some heals to your own god meanwhile having a huge amount of control over the board for the most part unless like i say some sort of anti-sleep card is worked into their their deck which you don't see a whole lot of and even if you do see players work anti-sleep into their hand it all really has to line up to work out in a way that's advantageous. I mean, you could lose a game by dropping a Demogorgon and expecting to, to control the board, and then having your opponent wake up your board, and then having them run everything into your face. You could lose a game that way. Um, but more often than not, you, you can take a game back from uh, the brink of defeat with Demogorgon. And then, of course, I've been uh, tossing in Apocalypse now. It's really no wonder that this is one of the decks, Board Wipe Death is one of the decks that has routinely done 25 of 25 weekend ranked. The funny thing is, and I'm not playing a pure Board Wipe Death deck, uh, I'm playing kind of, set, like I say, a kind of a fun zombie uh, death slash Board Wipe Death meta, and most of the time that I'm playing this, up in Mythic rank around the 1400, 1500 rating, 1300 to 1500 rating, let's say, to be fair, most of the time I play this deck, it doesn't feel fair. It feels extremely unfair. I feel like at any point in the game I can toy around with my opponent and I have so many options available. Just death has so many options. And like I said, I'm going to actually uh, show you guys the deck that I'm playing because uh, it doesn't just, it's not, doesn't, just, doesn't just rely on the traditional sort of board wipe death. Uh, let's see, Trial of the Underworld. I've also got Trial of the Underworld in there, not a very popular card. But this card, combined with, uh, I've also got a Helian Elite in there, this card combined with a Helian Elite, some Demogorgon, some Apocalypse Now. Most of the time when I'm playing this, and like I say, this is largely thanks to Demo, largely thanks to Apocalypse Now, largely thanks to End Times and some other ridiculous options that Death has. Um, this this particular combo and uh it, it's just it's it, most of the time you played it just feels like you have so many options to win uh you're usually ahead of the game you have your you have your opponent on the ropes you have them entirely locked down and controlled and meanwhile you haven't even put out your best moves yet right and then you're working towards um hypocrisy as a monster which drops down i think i dropped this down last time as a 69 59 or 5969 or something like that warded creature if they happen to kill it I also have you know raise dead and some other options uh, Just to bring Hippocrates monster back 
This, it gets so ridiculous. I'm having so much fun with this deck. I'm, I'm sorry to all of my opponents I played. I'm sure it's not a lot of fun to play against, but I tell you what, oh, ho, 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 I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, so anyway, back here, yeah, back to Demogorgon, guys. Back to Demogorgon. This card works into a lot of different decks. One of the top-ranked war decks right now, uh, with from from one of our, the very top-ranked players, in fact, uses a couple Demogorgons. It's uh, sort of a bit of a control war, I believe. And uh, the rating, I think, the player rating, I think, is something like 1,800 or something really ridiculous right now. And they work a couple Demogorgons. You see Demogorgons worked into a lot of the higher tier, high-end decks. And I can say now that finally getting a chance to play with this after kind of dreaming about it and eyeballing it for like the last year, finally getting a chance to play with this, is it all, cra it all, is it all that it's cracked up to be? Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It really, it really is. It's a, it's a, it's a extremely powerful kick-ass card. Uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. Uh, Demogorgon, was it worth the price? I don't know. That's really relative to hobbies, earnings, incomes. Uh, you know how much you justify spending on your hobbies, that sort of thing. Is it, is it worth it for the price? Probably not. You can still have like a ton of fun with super cheap decks and have really good win ratios. But is this card all it's cracked up to be? Yeah, it's definitely all it's cracked up to be. It's all that and a bag of chips. It really is. It's a hot, hot card. Also, on the hot, hard car hot, hot cards uh, list, Apocalypse Now. This is such a hot, hot card. Oh, so good. So, so bad and so good. Um, yeah, a couple of those Shadow Apocalypse is now sold. I was eyeing these up <clears throat> at the eight or nine hundred dollar range, and uh, then three sold and three sold, and then yeah. Okay, guys, Demogorgon, yes, it's good. Is it worth the price? I don't know. That's totally relative to uh, your, you know, hobby expense budget. But is it is it all it's cracked up to be in terms of gameplay? Yeah, it's a hot card. See you guys in the next video. For the crypto YouTube alternative, check me out on Odyssey. Everything that goes onto YouTube automatically goes onto Odyssey as well. If you love YouTube and but you don't love YouTube's policies all the time, hey, Odyssey gives power back to the creators. Also, check out the links in the dis in the description below. Discord community, also my buddy's crypto uh, gaming channel. He's covering Gods Unchained as well. Give him a follow. All right, see you guys later.